In this video, we're going to explore the shoulder abduction test, which is a special test used in the assessment of cervical radiculopathy as well as thoracic outlet syndrome. To perform the shoulder abduction test, the patient will be positioned in either sitting or standing. I'll be demonstrating this over here in the standing position. The patient will then be instructed to bring their affected upper extremity into shoulder abduction such that the palm of their hand is able to rest on top of their head, as you see right here. And you may want to consider holding this test position for at least 30 seconds. You won't usually see that in the literature regarding this in the assessment of cervical radiculopathy. However, as we'll see in just a minute, this can also be used in a way to assess for thoracic outlet syndrome. And normally for those tests, you want to hold the test position for around 30 seconds. So we'll just say here as a blanket statement, let's assess this for 30 seconds. Now, there are two ways in which a shoulder abduction test can be positive. The first type is also called the Bacotti sign, and this is where the patient gets easing of any familiar radicular symptoms, including numbness, paresthesias that are going into the affected upper extremity. So suppose I had numbness, let's say, going into my right upper extremity, and that was present in the resting position when my arm was by my side. When I lift it into this position, the test position, if I actually got a relief from that numbness, or at least went down, that would be a Bacotti sign or a positive test. And if it's easing of those symptoms, that's because this test position relieves pressure, particularly on the nerve roots from C4 to C6. And this is consistent with a cervical radiculopathy. Now, in terms of this type of positive test where the symptoms ease, the psychometrics have been studied, and they were studied by Wayne et al. in 2003, and they reported a sensitivity of 17%, which is terrible, but a specificity of 92%, meaning if you perform this test and there is a reduction in any of the radicular symptoms in that upper extremity, there's a 92% chance that the patient has a cervical radiculopathy. That's a pretty darn good specificity, but considering that the sensitivity is so low, you cannot use this to rule down a cervical radiculopathy. Now, the other type of positive test, the second type, is where you have an increase in familiar radicular symptoms, including numbness or paresthesias into the affected upper extremity. So suppose I had, let's say, tingling in my right upper extremity when it was at rest by my side. I go into this test position, and after around 20 to 30 seconds, I now have an increase in that tingling in my upper extremity. Well, that would constitute a positive test, but it couldn't be a cervical radiculopathy because if that were the case, the symptoms should ease, but instead they increased. And this is more indicative of thoracic outlet syndrome. And the rationale for this, why you might get an increase in symptoms in this position with TOS, is because the test position increases pressure within the interscalene triangle. Remember that the components of the brachial plexus come from the neck and move into the upper extremity, in part by moving between the anterior and middle scalenes. This is a space called the interscalene triangle or the scalene space. And if that space becomes compressed and has increased pressure, it will compress those nerves. And this position actually accomplishes that. So if there's an increase in symptoms with this test position, that may implicate thoracic outlet syndrome. The psychometrics, to my knowledge, have not been assessed for that, only for when there's an easing of symptoms. And that would be consistent more with cervical radiculopathy. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. 